the other thing to say about copyright is that we it's really important in terms of the money that you might earn or might not earn depending on how you play the cards of copyright so money is you know this is about the business of creativity and money is very often involved in who owns the copyright but it's not just about money it's about moral rights the right for your for you to be recognized as the um the creator of the work even if you no longer have the copyright so paul mccartney wrote you know the, the very famous song yesterday but he no longer holds the copyright so every time it's played on the radio which is about once a minute somewhere in the world the royalties don't go to him they go to i think it's now the sony corporation because the commercial rights in that song are have been bought and sold like like any other kind of property and he no longer has gets the money from the plays of it but his name will forever be associated with it you know nobody can take away i could i could spend millions to buy the copyright and then get all the royalties from from that song as it's played but i couldn't put my name on it and say that david parrish wrote that not paul mccartney so there's moral right but there's also um the question of you what you might call abuse of your art and the case that comes to mind here is is this one you don't even need me to move out of the way because you've all seen the, the famous image of Che Guevara. Now, that is on so many T-shirts and so many students' bedrooms wall, you know, walls all around the world that a lot of people think it's in the public domain, it's out of copyright, that it's not protected because everybody does copy it. But actually, it's owned by Alberto Corda, the original photographer who took that. He died actually a few years ago, but it's still copyright of his family and his estate. And he deliberately allowed people to copy it. Although it was his copyright, he didn't, he deliberately didn't protect it because he wanted people to put it on t-shirts and posters for the greater glory of the Cuban revolution. But when it came to an Italian drinks company, using it on bottles of vodka he objected he said you can't do that and they said but everybody uses it every you know it's like it's in the public domain and he says no it's not it's my copyright and i don't want you using it to sell vodka and they had to withdraw so you can be very loose with your copyright you know you can choose how to enforce it is the point and it's not just about making money from it necessarily but controlling who uses it or shall we say abuses it so we've got to think about this as well and there was a case of uh, the marmite trademark i think it was the british national party saying that you know we're, we're as british as marmite and you know trying to co-opt the marmite brand as sort of britishness for their racist views and the marmite company just said you can't do that you're like we object to using our brand um, for your political purposes and they had to back down so that's a bit different because that's a trademark but similar thing it's about the moral ownership and the control um, and i once had a, co a conversation with a, a guy who worked in biotech he said oh, a young guy he said i want to invent um, a a cure for malaria when i'm you know when i grow up and fantastic and he said but i don't want to make money out of it so i'm going to just put it into the public domain you know when i get this this new pharmaceutical then anybody can use it and i said don't do that please don't do that control the copyright or get a patent on it because otherwise a big drug company will take it and sell it for a lot of money whereas if you continue to own the the copyright or the patent i guess it would be for a, a chemical then you can, you can control what happens to it and you can insist that it's always given away for free and nobody makes a profit out of it. So even if your own motivations are not about money and profit, you can still control who does or doesn't uh, get access, 
uh, how, they, how people use it and who does or doesn't profit from it. So I would say keeping control of your copyright and your intellectual property generally, even if you don't care about money at all, because it's how it's used that, um, that you can still exert power over.